Welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Josh Taylor, Paul Zeiss in studio with you. Taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600 on the Borders and Borders Hotline. Also taking your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. We talked about this to end the first segment. Deathwish asked about it too. Now, we didn't go this far, but he asked, what is your take on Bill Belichick and Tom Brady's future with the Patriots? I know we talked about what Bill Belichick might be worth, but, Paul, your thoughts on maybe how much longer this group between Belichick, Brady, and Bob Kraft has together? I'd be shocked if they're breaking up. You know, as long as Brady's playing, I'll be shocked if Bill Belichick's leaving. But you never know. I mean, he obviously liked Jimmy Garoppolo a lot and sort of lost the power struggle. Not that Tom Brady was trying to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, but Tom Brady was basically trying to make it clear that he's not going anywhere anytime soon. So you can have this young kid, but he ain't going to sign up. So, I mean, I would say they probably still got three more years after this one together. Um, if they win the Super Bowl this year... Maybe Bill Belichick, you know, that Giants job is still available. <laughs> Maybe he looks into that. But I can't imagine what the compensation would be. What would the Giants have to give the, the pay? If, you know, in order, in order to get out of that contract, you know, they'd have to work out a trade similar to the, what the Raiders and the Tampa Bay did. What would be the compensation for Bill Belichick, especially coming off his sixth Super Bowl win? And don't forget, the, Ra the Patriots had to give the Jets compensation to get Belichick the first time yeah. because he had actually been the Jets coach and then resigned to right. you know, the Patriots. Right. So they had to give comp compensation as well. So that comes into play. But let's go to the phone lines, 412-575-2600. Let's go to Murray in Greenfield. Murray, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, fellas, thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. I listen to the show all the time. Appreciate you. So uh, I, I just want to say uh, I'm really impressed by the CW uh, for taking the step to uh, recognize. I guess I guess we'll never know. Yeah. I guess we'll never know where that Sounds going. good. All right, well, let's uh, – sorry we lost you there. Switch to David and Ligonier. David, you're on the nightly sports call. Yeah, I was wondering what you think about putting um, – the uh, Hayden on Gronkowski for the tight end in New England? You could, but would it help anybody else in any other area? I mean, you, I, I've heard every suggestion from Joe Hayden to Sean Davis to T.J. Watt to everything, and I'm going to keep asking this question. You're going to move Rob Gronkowski anywhere on the field if you're Bill Belichick. If you put T.J. Watt on him, they're going to split him outside. So you split him outside, you put Joe Hayden over him. You're going to put him back in the slot. You put another guy over him, they're going to find the mismatch, no matter who you put on him. They'll find that very next snap, and they will find the next guy where he presents a mismatch. Paul, I, and it's not that it's a bad idea. It's not that the thought of putting any guy on him is a bad idea. It's just the thought that no matter what you do, they have another move they can counter with to put him somewhere else yeah. and make him more of a, a mismatch. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, again, I, listening to Ray Lewis talk about it, the biggest thing is, you know, is stopping him from starting. In other words, have someone big enough and strong enough and more and physical enough at the line to get him off of his, you know, that first step. Right. And if you do that, you can really control what he's doing. And that's what the Ravens did all those years or whatever, those couple of years when they were able to really control him. They knocked him off of the line because once he starts running, that's where it's a mismatch no matter who you put on him. Exactly. If he's, you know what I mean? But if you can delay him for that one second or two seconds by hitting him and being physical with him, now all of a sudden he's got to get his momentum going. He's not nearly as fast. The timing's off. Right. Now you have a shot. Because if it coincides with yeah. the pass rush, that can get to Tom Brady right. with four or five right. guys. That makes it a lot more effective and a lot less likely that he becomes open in time. Well, I mean, that's, yeah, that's how you do it. Right. So it, it's great to think that it would take one guy, but the truth of the matter is, it's a team effort. It's going to take more than one guy. It's going to take a guy up front, maybe a guy in coverage, and maybe even a guy over the top that makes sure he doesn't get behind. So there's, there's a lot of working pieces, and it's not going to take just one guy to slow him down. Let's go back to the phone lines. Terry in Gibsonia. Terry, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, guys. I, I know Paul was kind of joking about it, but if you think about it, Cower never had the big payday, and, and now maybe he could come back and make the, that, those big bucks and possibly Cleveland. He's got a great to reason to now, right? <laughs> He's got a good Absolutely. reason to come back and get – and thanks for the call. Paul, I mean, could you, could you blame him from that perspective? Well, if John Gruden could take a decade off and come back and get $10 million a year. Why not? Here, here's, my thing. here's my thing. If I'm Bill Cowher, I would try and get a very similar contract, but I would have like a buyout or an option to, to, to get rid of the contract after like every two years. That's fair. Take it like a $12, 12 million a year for 10 years. And then after four years, take my $48 million and retire. I mean, that actually, that actually helps both the coach and the team also. Right, right. So you're not locked into a deal that pays you $60 million to walk That's what out. I would do. I mean, but again, 
Here's the thing. Bill Cowher likes his life. Uh, it's not like he's not making it. I mean, he's making $2 million a box a year or he something like that. He gets paid a lot that. to sit behind the desk. Like and, 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 like, isn't his wife, like, a musician that makes some money with music? Isn't she in a band or something? That, that, she, like, she, that helps. So, I mean, I don't think he needs money. And, and, and at the end of the day, if you have as much money as Bill Cowher has, which he didn't get that big payday, but he's not hurting, sure. um, it becomes lifestyle versus do I need, really need all this money? Yeah. That, that I might not ever be able to spend, you know, anyway. So I think in Bill Cowher's case, it would be really hard for him to give up the lifestyle he has right now. Happy is, happy is underrated. I mean, if you're making enough money, sometimes you just want to have something that you can get up and enjoy doing every day. And in Bill Cowher's case, like you mentioned, it's not like he's hard up for it. So unless he really wants to go through that, then more power to him. If not, yeah. he can stay where he is and still stay behind a desk and rack up seven figures a year and not think twice about it. Let's go to Mike in Bethel Park. Mike, you're on the nightly sports call. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, you guys are the best. I just Appreciate wanted you. to comment on, uh, you know, the John Gruden uh, contract thing. I think he owes, and a lot of people don't talk about this, Tony Dungy half of that $50 million worth. Tony Dungy built that Tampa Bay Buccaneer team to what it was, I think he got screwed when he got let go, in my opinion, a year or two early. And Gruden walked into a – he was spoon-fed basically a Super Bowl. Uh, and after that, just, you know, he rode the Dungeons coattail to the championship and really didn't prove himself with Oakland at all, I feel. Just wanted your comments. You know what? I don't think he's very wrong, Paul. I think he's well, it's, it's right. funny, you know, we always hear the Tomlin one, Tomlin one with Cowers players. Thing. I was waiting to hear but what you were going to say about that. But I think the other part of it is he actually did a better job in Oakland than he did in Tampa, in my mind. Because, you that. know, that team was in the wilderness. He brought them to the point where, so in, in essence, he got, okay, he doesn't get credit maybe for Tampa getting to the Super Bowl, but he should get credit for the fact that the team that they beat got to the Super Bowl because he built it. So, you know, again, I think he's a good coach. Right. I think he's an above average to good coach. He's not an elite coach. An elite coach is what gets $10 million. Yes. Bill Belichick, you want to tell me you're going to pay him $10 million? Obviously, it's hard to say. I wouldn't argue with that. Okay. You want to tell me that you're paying Mike Tomlin $8 or $9 million? Wouldn't argue with that Wouldn't either. argue with that. Um, but like these other guys that are, you know, like Jim Harbaugh, if he came back, if someone gave him $10 million, They'd, have, they'd need their head examined. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think that Gruden is good. He's just not elite yet. Now, if he goes and reels off three, three Super Bowls in six years, okay, then maybe it's worth it. I'll throw in one more thing to Mike's point about kind of being spoon fed the championship. You know what helped him out a lot, too? The fact that he faced his former team that was coached by his former assistant who didn't change anything. Kept the same plays, right, right. kept the same calls. Tampa Bay and John Lynch talked about this. He said, we went through everything in practice, what plays they were going to run, and Gruden actually acted as the scout team quarterback during the practices leading up to the Super Bowl. So they knew exactly what was yeah. going to happen because they didn't change And it's incredible. Anything. That's incredible, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand how that happens and how you keep your job as a coach after allowing that to happen. we got to take another break. We come back and we answer more phone calls. We answer more tweets. Stay with us.